Okay. Prepare yourself. In this video you're going to see fire, water, thermal imaging, x-ray imaging, and the sickest hot that you can get. Hi, I'm John from Proper Printing and I set myself the task to print a full size rim on this cr 10 s 5 out of difficult materials. I already got a few comments saying that uh, I'm a bit stupid that I'm going to use a stock hot end. Well, I'm not going to use a stock hot end. I'm going to use the sickest hot end that I could find. I reached out to Dice Design because I think that their hot ends are the best you can get and um, I reckon that uh, this hot end will be capable of printing everything that I want. So I reached out to them and uh, believe it or not, <laughs> they have sent me the Dice Extruder Pro and the Dice End Pro. The, yeah, it's, it's awesome. And I've told them that I'm going to, uh, to heat up that enclosure. 2000 watt of combined power I'm going to put into that enclosure. So everything within that enclosure is going to be a bit hot, cooling with hot air isn't a um, well, long story short i just want a water cooled system and the <laughs> dice design has a water cooled system they didn't only send me this uh, dice extruder pro with their ha hot end they sent all the water cooling parts as well so i've got a water cooling block for the hot end and i've got a water cooling block for the extruder motor and i've got a bunch of tubing because i'm going to print large things I need a large nozzle and the largest they had was 1.2 millimeter which is almost as thick as the material itself. The way that everything is mounted, everything fits and how it's made and how it feels, it's, it's insane. And I almost forgot that the maximum extruded temperature of this thing is 500 degrees Celsius. Of course, this is not everything. Some of you know I was a gamer back in the day. This, this really took me back to that case modding era. What you're about to see is overkill. This is not recommended by Dice Design. Dice Design recommended a 120 by 120 uh, radiator. And um, I went for a search and I wanted uh, the flattest radiator there is. And I came uh, with this XSPC. And the only thing that they had in stock was 120 by uh, 360. <laughs> Oh mama, we're gonna do it. This is going to be the um, the radiator for this thing. And I'm going to put it somewhere here. It of course comes with uh, some fans. So why not buy the sickest fans you can find. I've bought a pump, a way too large overkill pump. And it's also running at 12 volts. That's what I like about the CR10, that everything is running at 12 volts. So I can just put any cool case modding hardware onto there and I've got this reservoir which is also going to be placed somewhere here and a bunch of couplers and that's it basically final problem we have are the motors itself because if I'm going to heat this enclosure up to I will start at 70 degrees but maybe I will go up to 100 depending on how it, well it works those motors do not like these high temperatures I came up with an idea a few days ago and I tried it and it seems to work. I first wanted to make my own hot sinks out of aluminum and tubing and soldered that together and mounted at the back of the motor. But it has a drawback. The first drawback is that I have to buy aluminum. Well, that's not the biggest problem. But these uh, four screws which hold this motor together must be lengthened. So I have to find new screws for all the motors and the different motors have different screw, screw lengths. So I came up with the idea because the back of this motor it's already made out of aluminum. So why not just solder this tubing directly to the back of this motor. So I, this back itself is becoming the heatsink. That's what I'm going to show in this video. I'm going to show how to make these uh, aluminum heat, heat sinks out of these uh, motor back sides and this uh, aluminum tubing. How to solder that, how to bend it. And um, I'm going to add the Dice Design hot end to the sprinter connect the water, water cooling stuff to it 
let's move over to the shed and I'm going to show you how to make these heat sinks. Okay, I filled this rod with lead, so I can bend it into these tight corners. I'm going to do that according to this drawing. I've made this drawing for all four motors. All four are slightly different. First I'm going to bend this, and then I'm going to show you how to solder this rod to the back of this motor. I've got this 10 mm drill clamped up in this vise to bend it around. So somewhere here at the center. Defish. Okay, I've failed a few times as you can see here. So I've made this tool, which is made out of frustration. With this thing, I was able to bend this. And I was also able to bend this. So I think I've got the hang of it. So I can show you how this works and what I've done wrong. Okay, the first thing that I have learned is that I shouldn't do this. And secondly, to be sure that this lead stays in place. I'm going to clamp it down on the other end. So I can just place it in a tool like this with this piece of aluminum, which will help with the bending. So I can just hold it like this, clamp it down and bend it. And if I want to bend it further, I can just clamp it down like this and do the rest manually. Now I have to heat this up again to remove the lead from it. So and it should goop all out. God for the theory. <laughs> Maybe I should wear some safety glasses. <laughs> I think it's better to heat it up here at the ends first. Yes, there we go. Okay, that went a bit different than I expected. I'm going to make this uh, red version. So it will be placed like this. Yeah, and in order to do that, I have to disassemble the motor. And I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to do that in the studio because there is enough iron filings. <laughs> I'm going to flatten this with a bit of sanding paper on a piece of glass. Once this is flat and centered down, I can do the same thing on the, this uh, surface over here. And finally, we can start soldering. Oh man. Uh, I'm going to put some solder on this first. I'm using these solder rods by burns matic And first I'm going to heat this up and one, once it's hot enough, uh, I can start touching it and see if this will melt. Never stay too long in one position because chances are that you will just melt through. Yes. Starting to melt. And just add solder and don't hit the solder rod with the flame and make sure that the whole surface is covered with solder. Now this thing is thin and now I will do the same thing with this part. Well that bit of tubing isn't the biggest problem if you burn through that, but if I burn through this one, <laughs> I have one spare. It took a while, but now this is melting. Nice. Now I have to add this and heat everything up. Ah, 
<laughs> this is a lot different than the soldering that I'm used to do. I soldered both parts together and the last thing that I have to do is clean it up and um, do some sandblasting but um, it's already pretty late so uh, I'm not going to wake up the whole neighborhood here <laughs> by uh, <laughs> going to sandblast so I'm going to let this cool down and uh, start sandblasting tomorrow Well, the soldering is looking great. Now all four motors succeeded. One thing that I had to find out, if this is thermally connected, if this tubing is thermally connected to the back of this motor. Fortunately, at work, we have an x-ray machine. We just put this under that x-ray to see if we can look through it at all. And that uh, went pretty well. I'm pretty confident that this will work. Mental preparation. <laughs> Let's reconnect all the motors and add the dice extruder to this printer. And I have to almost put this whole printer together. Okay, I've put this thing back together and now I can add this dice design extruder. I've already made a bracket. I first wanted to use my quick tool change like I do with all my printers. But for this one I make an exception because it is water cooled and I don't think I will disconnect that water cooling anytime soon. So I've made this very simple bracket made out of polycarbonate. It's uh, very stiff. Alright. I think I can add our water cooling parts now.
I've connected everything and it looks sick. I've connected this 12 volt power supply to this pump. If I'm going to turn it on then the pump should run and it should pump all this liquid through these tubes and hopefully <laughs> it's not leaking. So that's what we are going to find out. Well let's turn it on. Oh man. Okay, I've read that the, sh the reservoir didn't need to be higher than the pump. That sounds better. Okay, well hopefully if we put it back up there, it will continue slurping up this water. Alright. Now this is a bit of a tricky part. Please let me know if you see something leaking because I cannot see anything. <laughs> nice! It's working! <laughs> Oh man, this is so sick. This was an insane amount of work, but I reckon this will pay off. I'm going to design some brackets to make sure that this tubing is moving like I want it to, especially this one over here. For this video, this is it. I'm not going to add the electronics yet. I've designed a whole enclosure in which everything will fit, including the electronics. If you have enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. One thing I always forget is that I want to thank everyone who has sent a donation. It helps a lot. So much to do still. Oh man. Especially that enclosure. Okay. Again, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.